RF is a value that we can measure for a given spot on a TLC plate. And uh, the RF is useful in a few ways. One thing is it tells us, uh, gives us some idea of how polar the compound is because the more polar a compound is, the more it's going to stick to the very polar silica gel, the stationary phase, and that means it's going to be traveling up our plate very, very slowly. And uh, if a compound is less polar, then it's going to be spending more time in the mobile phase. It's not going to stick to that polar silica gel as much, and so it's going to have a higher RF. So when we take a look at this TLC plate, one thing we see is that there's uh, two spots, so my mixture has at least two components in it. I say at least two because it's possible that one of these spots might have two uh, compounds in it. It's, it's, it's uh, possible for two compounds to co-spot. That's not too common, but, but uh, we can't rule that out. But there's at least two compounds in here. And based on this uh, pretty good separation, we could also predict that this top spot is the less polar of the two compounds because it has a higher RF and the bottom spot uh, has a lower RF, therefore it's the more polar compound. Now again, we can't put too much stock in that though because it's possible uh, for certain compounds if we change the solvent composition, we might even see a, a swap in the RFs uh, and one might end up being a lower RF, especially if they're, they're pretty close to start off with. And the other thing about these RF numbers is that they're so very dependent on your actual experimental conditions that it's not really a number that you can, um, that you can do much with. So a much better idea, rather than just running a TLC on a single compound, a single solution, is to always run a TLC with a second spot uh, for comparison. And so if we have a standard or a reference solution that we can use, that's going to be uh, very useful. So for example, I have, um, I've, I've done that same mixture on this middle spot and I'm adding two more spots, one to the left and one to the right, and I have two standards that I think might be in my solution, in my mixture, so I'm going to spot one of them to the left and I'm going to spot the other one to the right. And now when I run my TLC, I'll have a comparison rather than just a flat out TLC plate. Now where this is very useful is when we uh, are trying to follow the progress of a reaction in the lab. TLC is very commonly used as a tool for doing that and what we can do is we can t uh, take a TLC, we can spot some of the reaction mixture on the TLC and then right next to that we can compare it to the starting material. And the starting material um, over the course of the reaction should be consumed and so we can follow the reaction periodically by TLC and we would know that the reaction is done if the starting material spot disappears. Or uh, perhaps the, the starting material never completely disappears but we see it fading away and it, and it doesn't seem to be making much more progress um, and so we could decide that the reaction is done. We could also check for the appearance of a new spot that, would, that is the product. And that's another way that we can uh, make some judgment about the progress of our reaction by comparing it both to the starting material disappearance and the product appearance. Now let's take a look at how far we've come. Probably would get, let this go just a little bit longer, but we can see what we have so far. Now again, I'm going to mark the solvent front with my pencil right away, and I can let this evaporate, let the solvent evaporate before we take a look at it. So we can see it real well with the UV lamp. And now this is uh, going to be a more interesting TLC because now I can see that of these two spots in that middle column, one of those spots matches my sample. And so I have uh, a, a real good idea that that is one of the components of my of my mixture. The other spot looks like um, the solution I used is a little too concentrated or the spot I made was a little too big because that's more of a blob and I can't tell very well if that matches up so I would probably have to dilute this sample a little more or, uh, or use a smaller uh, micropipette 
capillary tube to get a smaller spot to before I can fully confirm the identity of that second spot.